You hear me hey, now? Buddy. Yep. Can you hear us okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good, good. Thanks for joining us, man. Thanks for doing this. Um, oh, you're good, man. We, oh, we, got everybody, we got everybody here, and we are ready to roll if you are. Nice. Oh, yeah. I'm in. All right. Let's, uh, we'll start first with Herbie Teope. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Blake. Welcome back to Kansas City. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. It's good to be back. Yeah. Hey, um, you're widely regarded as one of the top blocking tight ends in the league. Uh, you, you, you rank high. You score high consistently amongst all the analytic sites. What goes into the mentality to be a blocking tight end? And I'll have another question after this. Yeah, I think it's just, man, I've, I've gotten better each and every day. Um, you know, going into year seven, I've had some great coaches, you know, and then that's starting with, um, you know, Tony Sperano and, and San Francisco and, and been all over the place. And then obviously with um, Coach Melvin's done a great job. And then with Travis in there, man, I've, I've learned so much in that, that 2019 season. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to getting back out there and, and grinding away too. The second question, since you mentioned Travis, obviously you were the Cowboys last year, but when you look back at what Travis was able to accomplish last year as a receiver, what were your thoughts as you were watching him set all these records? I mean, it's incredible, man. I mean, I, I wasn't surprised at all just because being in the room with him, just the way he competes, the way he works every single day, uh, is no surprise to me, man. I mean, that guy is, is the best tight end in the league, and, and I can't wait to get back in the room with him. Go next to Matt McMullen. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Blake. Uh, welcome back, man. Um, my, What's going on, man? My question is pretty simple. Just why did you want to come back? You know, man, the, with the free agency stuff and, and just how crazy everything is, you know, you just, you just never know what's going to happen. But, uh, you know, my agent talked to the front office of the Chiefs, and, and once he said that, it was a, a no-brainer, man. I wanted to get back. Great front office, great coaches, great fan base. And, uh, you know, with my uncle playing there and just growing up a Chiefs fan, it, it was a, a no-brainer. Go next to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Blake. Welcome back. Um, now that you've been with you know, a bunch of different organizations, you were here and obviously not last year and then came back. Um, just how does Andy Reid, in your eyes, playing for different head coaches, differentiate himself and maybe entice you to make a return? You know, I think the biggest thing with Coach Reid is just the, the people he puts around him, the coaches, the staff. Um, and then you can tell with the players, too. Just like I said, the locker room and how great it is. Um, you know, just being different places, you really respect, you know, coming back and just knowing the guys in the locker room. But, you know, like you're saying, Coach Reed, he's unbelievable, uh, just a mastermind. And, and uh, you know, with Coach Bien, I mean, just like I said, all the coaches over there on the offensive side uh, that I deal with, uh, they're unbelievable, man. Just teachers of the game and, and just want to get you better as a player. Looks like we got four more. We'll start from the bottom and work our way up. Uh, go ahead, Darren. Uh, Blake, welcome back to Kansas City. Just, you know, your time in Dallas, you got a chance to be around Dak Prescott. But coming back to Kansas City, uh, you, you, you mentioned about Travis Kelsey and the competition and being there. What does Kelsey do that, that, that kind of motivates and pushes you to reach uh, new heights? And do you think you can push him this year to break his record that he set last year? Hey, man, you know, every, every time that, you know, I, I step on a, a field or, you know, in the tight end room, you know, I'm just trying to help, you know, those guys get better. And, and Travis does the same thing, man. He, when I was there, he helped me every single day, whether it was, you know, top of routes or seeing coverages or, you know, even blocking. So, and, and I know that, man. I know my role and whatever my role is, uh, you know, I'm going to be there and try to help the team win. So uh, I know it's going to be a great room and, and you know, we're just going to get right in there just like we, just like we started it and uh, keep pushing, man. Let's go next to Sarin Petro. Go ahead, Sarin. Uh, Blake, uh, uh, listen, I know you're not going to say anything negative about any other place you've been, but you know, last year down in Dallas, there was a lot going on. There's a lot of conversation. Once Dak went down, what's his future? That's been swirling down there for three years. I I'm just curious, how, how does that, you know, you, you mentioned Andy Reid and his style and the coaching staff. Things are pretty mellow here. Even when there's been some off the field things, he does a pretty good job of calming it down, maybe to our chagrin, right, in the media. Uh, he, he, you know, there's nothing you can attach to and maybe make a big deal out of. But I, I'm, I'm curious how, you know, you've been, like you said, a number of different places. How having like a steady, calm environment versus maybe all the stuff that was going on last year in Dallas is, is you know, much more conducive to playing winning football? Well, I will say that, you know, Coach McCarthy came in there with, with no OTAs and, and, you know, very limited stuff. And, and I thought he did a great job, man. And, and it was a great locker room there as well. And, 
like you said, you know, injuries, sometimes that happens in the game and, and you got to kind of just battle through it and push through it. But, you know, like you said, I, I think with Coach Reed, uh, he's so great because he's the same guy every day. You know, you might have a bad day or a bad practice, but the next day, you know, he's going to be the same guy. And, you know, you're striving for the same goals and, and you're trying to win a championship. So that's why I respect him so much is, is like I said, he's just the, the same guy every day. Let's go to Matt Derrick. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Blake, welcome back to KC again. Um, you know, last year, the Chiefs, I mean, Andy Reid's always been a multiple tight end kind of guy, but they used a little bit of less 12 personnel last year. What is it about, you know, you feel like your skill set that suits you well to this offense? And, and how does Andy and, and, and the enemy and the offensive guys and the coaching staff really utilize that second tight end spot effectively? Well, you know, just like I was saying, uh, you know, it, it's 12 personnel is awesome. You know, obviously I love it because, you know, you get more tight ends out there. And, and you know, just like I said, with a guy like Travis, it, it is so good out there at, at everything that, you know, when I'm out there, I'm just trying to, to make the team better, man. And, and if my role is to block that six technique and, uh, you know, make that run spring for, for 50 yards or whatever it is, or to get the first down, then, then I love it. And that's why, you know, I'm pumped to come back to KC and, and whatever my role is, um, I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. All right, we got two more, Adam Teicher and Nate Taylor. Uh, let's go to Adam first. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Blake, a couple things. Uh, first of all, what was it like to leave here just as the Chiefs had won a championship? But was that hard to kind of take yourself out of this situation? And, Brad, I'll have one follow-up as well. You know, it was. Uh, it, it definitely was difficult uh, just with the ride and, and you know, just everything that happened after the end of that season when the COVID hit and, you know, everything kind of slowed down a little bit. And like I said, I signed with the Cowboys and everything was virtual and, so that, that part was tough, just trying to learn the offense and, and kind of get back in the swing of things. But uh, it definitely was tough. But, you know, that's why, that's why I wanted to come back. And, and I'm, I'm so happy to be back, too. So, All right. And how did you get your Super Bowl ring? You know, I, I actually saw, uh, I saw a lot of guys when they did the ring ceremony. And mm -hmm. uh, they were doing Instagram Live or sending videos. So we got to see that, which, which obviously Cam Irving was, was over in Dallas with me, too. So mm -hmm. we were – we were watching, uh, watching it pretty good, and and uh, finally they sent it to me. So I I got it in the mail, and um, it's it's been pretty special, man. That's for sure. And we'll go last to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hey Blake, welcome back. Good to see you, man. Um, is there anything that you feel like you could take from your first time with the Chiefs that you can translate uh, to this upcoming season that leads you to believe that you could have an even better season than you did back in 2019? Well, I think it goes back to what I was saying, too, about the coaches, man. I mean, the offensive coaching staff that they have over there is, um, is unbelievable, man. And, and they're not going to tell you anything that, that's going to lead you astray, man. So I think that's the, the best part about them, that, you know, they're, they're going to prepare. You're going to be prepared. And, uh, you know, when you get to that game, just, just trust and listen to them. And like I said, when you got 15 back there and all the threats and, and Travis in the room, um, it, it's going to be pretty special, man. So I'm just ready to get to work, and um, and we'll start from there. Blake, we appreciate you taking the time to man. We'll talk to you soon. All right, sounds good. See you guys. Appreciate See you. Ya. All right.